What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, I have a nice stack of graded books here that we're going to be reviewing. We're going to be looking at each book and going over examples of how you all can maximize your return on investment if you're thinking about cracking your slabs and resubmitting them either to CGC, CBCS, whoever it may be. Before we get into the video, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take the time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below as well. And I want to remind everybody, if you guys are in the market right now for comic book supplies, please check out the bcwsupplies.com link. You can save 10% off of your BCW orders by using the code journos. This code never expires. So you can use it as many times as you want. All right. Let's get into these books here, folks. So uh, what we're going to be looking at is basically would each of these books benefit from me cracking the slab and resubmitting it? So before I get into that, I want to remind everyone, for those that watch my channel, uh, watch my videos, you guys know that I'm very skeptical about the grades within the grading community right now, especially my issue with 9.6 versus 9.8. Obviously, grading is subjective, but as of right now, since we do not have uh, the transparency that I believe we should have in the grading community, sometimes it's it's very tough for me to justify even cracking and resubmitting a slab because you just never know. So fair warning, Obviously, it's always a risk. It's a risk sending your books in to get graded. And if you're going to be spending more money to crack a slab and resubmit, then it's even a bigger risk. So there's a couple of things to be conscious of. One, are you wanting to crack a slab and resubmit for a book that you purchased already graded? All right. Or is it a book that you submitted yourself? You got back. you like, ah, I don't really like that grade. I think I can bump it up. Okay, those are two things to ponder. Another thing to ponder is, has this book been pressed? So if it's a book that you submitted already and you pressed it or you had it sent off to be pressed, then you already know that it's been pressed. So that, for me, changes the answer. Should I spend more money to crack this and resubmit it? If a book has already been pressed, personally, nine out of 10 times, I probably would never resubmit that book. Nine out of 10. I'll, I'll probably talk about that one out of 10 times here in this video, all right? If it's a book that you already purchased and you have the skills to be able to eye that book and look at that book, even in a case and say, I'm going to assume that this book has never been pressed, then it might be worth it to spend that money, crack it, resubmit it, okay? Um, even if a book has been pressed, the one thing that we're going to look for in all of these books today are what type of defects does the book have? Does the book have pressable defects? or non-pressable defects. Pressable defects are as sounds. They are defects that probably and most likely can come out with a solid press. Non-pressable defects are things that even if you press the book up with a, an amazing press, they're not coming out. And what are those? Well, they are rounded corners, uh, rips, color blemishes, water stains, spine ticks that break color, any type of creases that break color, and so forth. So let's just get into this, the first book, folks. And we're using my uh, Fantastic Four 48 in a 3.0 as an example, first and foremost. Let's move these out of the way a little bit here. Okay, so I purchased this book, already graded, in a 3.0, uh, 3.0 off-white to white pages. This book has since like more than tripled in value since I purchased it. We're going to look at this book though. Let's see if we can catch on the glare. Do you guys see that? Do you all see? What do you see? What do you see? Ripples. I can almost guarantee you that this book has never been pressed. All right. I can almost guarantee you that this book has never been pressed. So let's look at the back. Same with the back. You guys see that? We can look at the edges real quick here. Obviously, there's some uh, there's a color break right right there. You guys see a little bit of a color break increase right there. Obviously, some rounding and blending of the edges. You guys see see a little bit of color breaking right in there. But then you could see that the indentation is actually 
Looks like that could be pressed out, but there's a little bit of color break right at the towards the bottom that can't be pressed out. So um, again, up here, you can see uh, rounding of the edges, color break increase right in there, uh, a little bit of chipping going on right at the top there. You guys see that. And then, of course, the spine, color breaking spine ticks all throughout. Uh, look at all that right there. So obviously, uh, that's not going to benefit uh, from a press or anything, but you guys see the waves. Um, it is under my assumption that I can crack this book, give it a nice press. And this book has the possibility of getting at least a one grade point bump up to say a 3.5, possibly even a, a 4.0. But one thing that worries me is this color rub right here. Look at it. Look, look at the fantastic force. See all that color rub and, and this chip. All right. So, another thing that worries me too is what is this rippling? Could it be, could it be a uh, moisture damage? And if it is moisture damage, it's not that pressing it up and smoothing it out wouldn't, you know, possibly bump up the grade. But I know in my experience, CGC really hits hard on moisture damage. So you're always taking a risk. Here's the thing: it would cost me what, including shipping, forty bucks, forty something bucks to go and press this up. Because this book has increased in value so much since what I paid for it, I wouldn't be losing money to go try it again necessarily. Unless, even if it came back a 3.0 again. But still, there's been plenty of times where a comic book has been cracked, pressed and clean, sent back into CGC or CBCS, came back with a lower grade. If this book comes back with a 2.5, there is a wide margin that I can lose money there. You see what I'm saying? So... Everything is a risk. I think it would be a worthy risk to crack this if I was willing to play, uh, uh, the, to gamble on it, but I'm not. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I know there's a lot of collectors out there that would be willing to take that risk. I I'm confident in my own grading skills that there's no way, even with the press of clean, that this can come back uh, lower than a 3.0. There's no way. All right, next up, we have uh, Warlock number one in an 8.5. Now, here's the thing. I did send this out. I did send this out myself, but I, I did not press and clean it. So if we look at certain things like, let's see, right here. Now, there is a color-breaking spine tick right there, but it indents into the comic book. So this can at least get flattened. It's not going to get rid of the color break, but it can flatten it. Same with right here. So, and I, you could work bolt. Here's one that doesn't color break. I don't know if you guys see that. It's barely there. And, you know, you can smooth that out. But there is something in here on the cover right here. Look at that. There's an indentation right there that can get smoothed out with a tack iron and a ball bearing. Um, this one does not color break. This spine tick right there, that's an indentation inward. That could get flattened out. Same with up here, if you guys can see that. Very mild. There's not much you could do about the corners they're decently sharp but a little color color wear you know um i do believe that this could benefit from a press just because of those few defects that i showed you in terms of just smoothing out the spine and then getting rid of this indentation right here there's actually a little smaller one because it looks like there's one right next to it but it's very hard to see let's look at the back the back is really nice. Again, I think you can even look at this and say, oh, I could smooth that spine out a little bit. I do believe that um, this absolutely can get a 9.0. Little uh, the, the bottom of the spine here, a little concerning, but I've seen 9.0s with corners like the ones on this. So if I would crack this and give it a press, I, I would be decently confident that it could get a 9.0. But again, just with the grading companies and inconsistency, you never know. Um, and then you also have to look at value. Is it worth it? Is a night what, what's what's the going fair market value for an 8.5 of this book next to a 9.0? And is the differentiation even worth it? Is it even worth me spending 40 bucks to go send this back in to CGC? So that's another thing that you all need to be aware of. You need to be aware of fair market value. Is the uh is the difference in grade worth it 
all right? We are going to explore some 9.6 and 9.8s too in this video, but I'm going to say, I'm probably going to save those for last. Let's look at a, a couple more. Here's a 9.4 White Pages Eternals, number one. This book is on fire right now. Very immaculate book, but look at this. See the top? You could see a little bit of waviness, what I like to call a little bit of a crinkling right here that I do believe can be pressed out. That I do believe that could be pressed out. You got a corner here that's not really 9.8 sharp. The bottom is though, man, everything else is super sharp on this. Super sharp. The back is immaculate. And again, folks, another thing that you need to take into consideration, when you already have a book, especially if it's one that you purchased already slabbed and you don't have greater notes, you don't know what's going on inside of the book. You don't know even especially if it's a lower grade, you don't know if there's a rip of a page in inside of the book. Now you could go back um, and see if you can purchase the greater notes, but you know sometimes they don't issue greater notes for higher grades. So I I'm gonna assume that CGC probably didn't even give greater notes on this because in my experience from me sending out books, I never got greater notes on a book uh, 9.2 or higher, never. But there is a possibility here that this could get pump, bumped up to a 9.6. Uh, I absolutely don't believe it could ever be a 9.8, but <laughs> I've seen some <laughs> uh, question questionable books. Um, so again, I got to look at the value. This book's hot right now. Would it be worth it to press and clean, crack it, press it clean, send it back in to try to get a 9.6 and, and bump up in, in return on investment? But again, I take the risk of it coming back, maybe even a 9.2. All right, next up, let's... Let's do this Black Panther. Not really a key book, just a Black Panther number three. I bought this, graded, all right? It was only like 20 bucks, so less than the cost of the slab. But this is another one, just like my um, Fantastic Four 98. I'm gonna assume this was never pressed. You could see how the book doesn't sit perfectly flat and there's waves in it. I definitely think this book could benefit from a press. It does have some rounding of the corners and whatnot. Um, so, you know, it's not gonna be a super high grade at all because of that. But, and I can see on the back too, that the, the, the book doesn't sit perfectly flat. I guess you can see it a little bit there on camera. See right there above the light glare. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could press this book up. Uh, I think this book can um, definitely get probably a, a 7.5 if there's nothing going on in the interior. But would I do it? I would say no, because guess what? This book, as of right now, it's not even worth the 30 something dollars that I would spend to crack it and press and clean it and then send it back into CGC. And keep in mind, if you don't press your own books, you're gonna be spending money to get it pressed and cleaned as well. So this one, I do believe it could get a bump up, but it just wouldn't be worth it to me in terms of return on investment. All right, here is a uh, Darth Vader number three and a 9.2. This is one that has non-pressable defects, folks. And I don't think it would be worth it because, and I'm gonna show you right here, I believe what really knocked this book down was the black cover and all of that color rub. You guys could see it all along there. There's a little bit of uh, a, a, a ding right on the top of the spine there as well. But you, you can see all of that color rub. There's a more right down here. Uh, so these black, you know, these black covers, um, they're, they're, they're tough. So this would be one, again, you're looking at pressable defects or not pressable defects. There's nothing you could do about all of that color rub there. Look at even on the spine itself, on the tip of the spine. You, you can't you can't do anything about that there. All of that color rub. Look at that. So I would not spend money, even though this is a hot book, and I, I think it's going to keep getting hotter and hotter. Um, I do not believe it's going to uh, get a bump up. Uh, you guys can see that probably this, I don't know if you can see it, but this book is sliding around in the case. That's another thing that concerns me with CGC books as of late. Uh, they slide around in the case. So if you're moving it like this, that book is is wearing. You can hear it. That That's not good. But that's for another video. <laughs> All right, folks. Next up, we do, and I saved these for last. We have a couple of 9.6s. And this is where the waters get murky, folks, okay? We have a 90s book. 
Uh, beautiful black cover. White pages, 9.6. I just, this is one of my favorite Amazing Spider-Man covers of all time. Uh, 346. And uh, I just sent this in. I did give it a press. I believe that I thought this book was going to be a 9.8. But it's just, it's so tough. So um, this is one where I've looked over this book and I don't see any non-pressable defects. I mean, the spine is immaculate. Is this a color? Nope, that's just fuzz. That was something on the glass, on the case. There is no noticeable defect on the spine whatsoever. Whatsoever. There's dust on the... Look at this edge. Look at that edge. Oh my goodness. Then we get over to the corner. I mean, that corner is as sharp as can be. Let's look at the edge of the book outside. Oop. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man, just perfect. That is just perfect. And I did examine inside the book. Now, let's look at this top corner. This might be what CGC was looking at. I mean, is that a 9.8? But again, if you look at what, uh, if you use the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comics, and if you look at... Uh, even what CGC says, their brief descriptions and what the grades are, you know, it, that's negligible in my humble opinion. I, I, it's it's very hard to tell. And a 9.8 is allowed uh, negligible defects. Uh, the back is perfect. So here's the thing though. So this is one of those that it's just, I think depending what grader you get that day or... um what mood they're in, this book could come back a 9.8 one day and 9.6 the next, obviously. So, there's nothing, I mean, the book sits pit, pretty, pretty flat. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, there may be a little bit, I mean, now that's flat. So, this is one of those where I'm going to ask you all, I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's put value aside, all right? This isn't a huge, huge value book. I just got it graded because, for one, I thought it could come back at 9.8. Because in a 9.8 grade, it is solid in terms of value. But it's one of my favorite covers of all time. Most of my graded books are Spider-Man because I love Spider-Man. So I'm just happy to have it graded. Let's put value aside. Say this was a book that, in a 9.6, was worth a couple hundred dollars. And in a 9.8, it was, it was double. It was worth like 400 to 500. Looking at what you see here. Would you all take the risk of cracking the slab, pressing, cleaning it, maybe even sanding it in to get professionally pressed and cleaned, and then spending the money to get it graded again? I want to know your thoughts below. If it was a two, roughly a two hundred dollar book in a nine point six, and about a four, say four fifty to five hundred dollar book in a nine point eight, it depend from what you see. And I will say, I did check the inside of the book. The inside of the book is just as immaculate as the outside. All right, folks, let's look at one more book today, okay? This is my Spawn 311 Chadwick Boseman tribute in a 9.6. Again, I thought this was going to be a 9.8. It's just, it's one of the, it's a similar situation. Similar situation. And again, this is a situation for me where the value isn't there. For me to crack it, re-slab it, and pay to get it re-slab up before a 9.8 because just the value is not there. I did this book because I wanted this book in a slab for me to like display because of what the book and the cover means to me. But just just immaculate. The one thing that I was um, wondering was this right here. I don't know if that's... See, look at that right there. Maybe I didn't catch that. Ooh, do you guys see those two little white dots right on each side of the staple? See, it's not, you guys could see the dust. See all that dust? If I go like that, the dust, it's gone. This is not on the outside of the case. Now, is that something on the inside of the case? 
I don't know. You know what it looks like? It looks like possibly a manufacturing indentation from the staples. Look at that. Mmm. Could this be the one defect that brought it down to a 9.6? You can even look at this staple right there. You don't, there's nothing like that. Is there? Maybe there's a little bit, but is that normal? I'd have to look. I have other raw issues with these. I got to look at those. So this is something right there, folks. So there you go. So this is it. So let's just, again, we're going to hypothetically say that this is like a, an ultimate fallout four. And, you know, the value between a, a 9.6 and a 9.8 is like, you know, what? A thousand, a little over a thousand dollars the last time I checked. Is, is, is this one that you'd be willing to crack open, spend the money to, to, to press and clean again and resubmit, knowing what you know and knowing what you see here. And I, I do believe I, I miss these. I miss this. And I don't even know what that is. Hmm. And again, if it comes back, if you send it back in and it comes back a 9.4 and it's a UF4, then you lose money. So again, I'm going to ask you folks watching, if this was a UF4 in this condition, graded in a 9.6, and all you saw was those little dings on that staple, would you press it, clean it to try to send it back in to try to get that 9.8? There it is, folks. Uh, so many, so many questions. I, I actually, I do want to show this book off real quick before we end the video. Whoop. Whoop, there goes my books. Um, this is another situation of where you could look at a mid-grade book and a 4.5 and say, you know, there's so many pressable, so many non-pressable defects that it's just not worth it. You know, and, and this is you getting savvy on grading. And I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I always recommend the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comic Books. It's really helped me a lot out of all the books that I sent in over the last few years. I've been, um, I've been spot on with over half Whereas um, most, the majority of the other books, I've been off by one grade point, either upper, uh, uh, lower or higher. So if I guessed a 5.0, it came back a 4.5. If I guessed a 4.0, it came back a 4.5. And there's only been two books that I've been off by a decent amount. So um, I highly recommend the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comics. But again, you know, you got big, big color creases uh, in this book. And, you know, just all the where I could sit here and say, yep. This book, this book is roughly a uh, a four point five, maybe a five point on a good day, but you know, you you play that out and say, is it is it even worth it for me? It really wouldn't be. So, there it is, folks. There it is. Got my stand falling on a Yoda there. Uh, let me know what you all think in the comments below. Um, again, when it comes to CGC, CVCS, any graded books, folks. It's always a risk, always. You are not, even if you crack it, press it, clean it, you are not guaranteed a higher grade. You're not even guaranteed that same grade that it was at before. It can absolutely come back a lower grade. Nothing is promised. Take your risks. Let me know in the comments below what type of risks you all are willing to take. If you have had success uh, cracking open your slabs, spending money to send them back in to get those grade bumps, hoping to get that higher return on investment. Thank you all so much for watching today. Again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Be well, and until next time.